So now that I've told you this is how you need to build Angular applications, the obvious question is how does this work? We are essentially teaching the browser new tricks. The browser has a very limited set of vocabulary, which is what the HTML spec covers, right? Whatever is in the HTML spec, browsers typically do it. But now we are talking about creating our own HTML elements, our own custom HTML spec. How does the browser know what to do with it, right? So here's how the here's how things work in an Angular application. This is how the browser learns these new tricks. So the first thing you need to do in an in, in any Angular application is of course you need to have an HTML, right? So you write your HTML, and then you need to add this new layer of functionality to it, right? The way you do this is by first adding the Angular JS script. Angular is available as a downloadable JavaScript file. You can go to angularjs.org and download the file, or you can link it to a location on the CDN where the file is hosted, but that's the very first step. You need to add the AngularJS script into your HTML file. If you don't do that, then the browser really wouldn't know what to do with your custom HTML elements, right? The browser just knows the standard HTML syntax. So you create your HTML, you add the AngularJS script. So now Angular is available on your page. The next thing you need to do is to create your custom directives or components. In the case of the current date example, you're gonna create your current date element because it's not available yet, right? The browser doesn't know it. So you're gonna create your current date element and then define the logic for it. In this case, the logic would be show the current date, which would be get the current date and then display it, right? You're gonna define this logic, right? You declare the element and define the logic. So you create all these custom elements, as many as you want, to create them. And then the final step is to actually use those elements in your HTML, right? You can have, you've declared the elements and you've defined the implementation for it. Now you're gonna actually use it in your HTML. So there are a couple of steps that happen here. When you create your directives, when you create your components, you're basically using an Angular API to define the behavior for it. You're basically saying, hey, Angular, these are the custom elements that I need. Now for each element, this is the HTML and this is the behavior. Now go register them, right? So that's the imperative step. And then you use the directives, which is the declarative step. Now when you use the directives, Angular is gonna say, hey, I see this custom element. I know you had defined this before and this is the behavior. Now I'm gonna go implement that behavior, I'm gonna execute that behavior. And this is how you create these custom components and actually use them, all right? So this is like the basic process for creating an Angular application and using them. If this is not very clear, just wait for a little bit. We're actually gonna create an Angular app and it'll make more sense. Uh, what Angular also comes with is some custom inbuilt elements, right? Angular comes with its own directives that you can actually go and use the minute you include the Angular script in your HTML page. You don't have to create those custom directives yourself. You can if you want, but Angular comes with its own directives that you can actually start using without creating your own custom elements. The minute you add your Angular script in your page, all those custom directives that comes out of the box with Angular will be available to you, all right? So now let's set up an AngularJS application. 